What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real, and it is time once again to do Fantasia. I'm excited because this is my third time covering Fantasia, and although I haven't had the pleasure um, of attending this festival in person just yet, I have enjoyed the privilege of covering this festival uh, remotely here in the Pacific Northwest. But what's covering festivals uh, without a few friends? It's always funner with friends. So I have a couple on the line here to uh, talk with movies, uh, talk about the selections at Fantasia. One of them is a for real team member in Vancouver. We have the super amazing Todd Kelly on the line. Hi there. Happy to be here. And of course, frequent flyer on for real content. We have Taylor Baker in Seattle from Drinking the Movies. I'm excited to talk with movies about friends. Yeah, that. I committed to it. You told me to, and I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. And now we have joy. You're welcome. And now we have joy. This is true. Um, before we jump into Fantasia talk, there is one really quick shout out I want to give. I want to congratulate uh, ContraZoom for hitting the big 200 on their podcast. Uh, so they just uh, published their 200th episode, and uh, and it's exciting to reach 200. I think I got to two and was like, this is a lot of work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that's really huge. And and uh, and I know they talked a little bit about the the progression of 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 their podcast and and how they got to where they are. And uh, and also, if you listen, I have a little voicemail on there as well. The episode is themed after um, movies that made us, and so I got to give a little snippet of which movie uh, I chose to talk about that made me and that made me the the movie watcher that I am. And spoiler alert, it is not Lord of the Rings. I know a lot of people out there probably thinking, a lot of my friends probably think I would talk about Lord of the Rings, but uh, Stop I love it. Get out. Yeah, I was I was thinking like, what is the <laughs> first movie that Peter Jackson made? Because that's the only thing more influential on Thomas is Peter's success. I, I, yes, and we can. I mean, I could do a whole podcast on that, but uh, but you might you might be both surprised and a little um, underwhelmed by what I ended up choosing. But it was a very significant movie. So if you want to know which movie that is, listen to ContraZoom's 200th episode, which is now published, uh, where you can listen to podcasts. So. All right, want to get that out of the way, and uh, now we get to talk to talk about Fantasia, which is happening from July fourteenth to August third. Nice to have a lot of time to uh, to cover a festival. Um, uh, Fantasia has always traditionally been a longer one, and so um, yeah, just more time to watch movies, which I'm excited about. Um, what? Uh, and we're going to talk about some uh, some festival favorites and and of course the movies that we're most uh, excited about. But I don't know, um, uh, Baker. We'll start with you. What is your history with Fantasia? How have you felt about um, covering the festival in the past? And uh, and yeah, just give us a little history that, that you've had. I think my history is the same as yours. I think we've been covering it the same amount of years. I think we started the same summer with. Um, festival attendance um as such it's a very special festival in my heart because it is the first one mm -hmm. and it's definitely um more of a genre festival and what that means is that i don't have to be quite so serious and i don't have to be quite as um exhausted with my time as i do at these other festivals because it is longer um it means that i'll laugh a little bit more i'll roll my eyes a little bit more and I'll find things that I otherwise would have never seen, for sure. Um, and it also means special filmmakers um, coming onto my radar. I think of things like One Cut of the Dead, which I never would have seen if it wasn't for Fantasia. Um, so, yeah, it's it's got a very warm place in my heart. And it's kind of, um, it's the only festival that doesn't feel stressful, on my calendar <laughs> that's what it means to me how about you oh i totally agree um and and i especially agree with the fact that fantasia is a really great hub for movies that i would not have seen otherwise um yeah it's definitely your fault that i'm doing this film festival thing um i remember i'm pretty sure i remember the conversation where you're like you just need to like apply and i'm like that's exactly what i would have said <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And so I single did single sentence do objective. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I did. And, and ever since then, it's just been a whirlwind of film festival coverage and is now a very massive part of what 
for real is all about. So uh, yeah, as same as you, uh, Fantasia holds a very special place in my heart for that reason. And one of these days we'll get there in person. But uh, on the subject of the first film festival um, or the, uh, attending Fantasia for the first time, this is actually Todd's first time uh, covering Fantasia. Todd, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm really excited. It was it was funny because you kind of you read through like the program and it'll be like, yeah, from this director who previously at, you know, X at Fantasia. And there's just so many titles uh, that I love that played at Fantasia in years prior that I had no idea played at Fantasia. And so it's just really exciting to kind of like do it in the moment and get on board like the train of movies. I know that if I would eventually have seen, I would love. And I get to see them now when they're premiering, which is uh, very exciting. I'm, I'm yeah, super pumped. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Um, I'm excited to have you uh, on board with covering the festival this year. And uh, and yeah, I think that there's going to be some really, really cool films, really good things to cover. Um, so I wanted to start with some festival favorites. As I was looking through the lineup, I was like, oh, I recognize these films. Um, and so, uh, you know, um, first up is cha-cha real smooth. I wish. (laughs) Oh, wait, someone didn't change my teleprompter. I've just been sticking with what we've been doing since Sundance. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm like viciously back backspacing because mine still says flee. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Movies that Thomas will not shut up about. Yeah. And, uh, I will, I will. I will avoid flea and cha-cha real smooth conversation. Oh my gosh, bodied? Thing. We're talking about bodied? Bodied. Oh, dude, that's the one I haven't <laughs> talked about in a long time. I'm due for a Deep rewatch ball. on that. <laughs> <laughs> bodied three times in a row? What? I'm down for that. <laughs> uh no, so uh, so there's a few uh, films that we saw, uh, at least me and Taylor saw at other festivals that we wanted to highlight really quick as things worth checking out if you um, are attending the festival. And let's actually start. Hmm. Where do you want to start, Taylor? I didn't choose which one to start with. I think the best one to start with is the one that has the broadest appeal and will be the most joyous for every single person that thinks Fantasia and gets stoked. And mm-hmm. that's probably Deadstream. Dead stream. I love talking about this movie. Um, we've covered it a, a couple times um, uh, on previous videos, and um, it is a film that's directed by Vanessa Winter and Joseph Winter. Um, uh, a POV uh, kind of film about a um, a disgraced uh, online personality who tries to regain. Uh, his popularity and following by staying overnight in a in a haunted house and and live streaming it. Um, it is similar in a lot of ways to the movie that just uh, went to streaming. Um, uh, why am I spacing on the name? Uh, what's the other one? I don't know. Why are you spacing on the name? If you're going to dash, dash cam, cam, dash cam, that's what I was <laughs> yes. Oh, Rob Savage's dash cam. Yeah. Yes, it's similar in many ways to Rob Savage's dash cam, but I think it, it also it's actually um, it'll appeal to a lot more people than dash cam did. Um, so I don't know about that. I think oh. just not enough people saw dash cam. Is I, the protagonist of Deadstream less insufferable than the protagonist of Dash? <laughs> Barely. I think he's Barely. redeemable. He's redeemable. <laughs> I think he's redeemable, and I think that's what's going to make it make this a lot more appealing to many people. Yes, he's a lot more uh, identifiable. But if mm-hmm. you ever wanted to hate your main character, I mean, Dash Cam is fantastic. Yeah, that's Andy fantastic. Hardy does such a good job. <laughs> Absolutely, but Deadstream is just it's. Uh, like I said, similar in many ways. I mean, it's it, the whole thing is like a live stream. You have the comments scrolling on the side uh, for most of the movie. Um, you know, it's definitely a strong personality that's kind of helming the, uh, the 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 project. Um, and I I had a lot of fun with it. I actually, in fact, I remember when we talked about it. Um, what uh, where did it debut? Um, 
South by Southwest? I think so, right? When it debuted, I remember we did the um, the curtain raiser for that festival and you had it on your list and I yep. didn't. I was yeah. like, I don't know. There's an image of someone sticking their finger up his nose. That doesn't And seem... I was like, absurdism at a film festival in March, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I did end up watching it and I ended up really, really enjoying it. Um, but I also enjoyed Das Cam. So um yeah, I guess, you know, take that for what it's worth. But, you know, Baker, what is, what, what is your take on, on Deadstream? On Deadstream, I think it's a really competently made and really well edited, um, especially like emotionally uh, film. I think this is their first project as uh, co-directors and the timing of the beats, the cleverness with I need to leave and go get something from a different room. And then all the lights turning off um, just the, the way that they subtly play their plot threads, even though everyone knows what's happening, they still commit to the foibles of the genre in a really charming way that um, I think is really rewarding for an entire viewing. It, and you know, the thing like the, um, the finger in the nose, like it looks patently fake, but once you get to that moment in the movie, you don't really have the emotional energy to check yourself out. If you're like me, you have to take it seriously and believe what happens with the fingernail in the nose. Yeah. Even the, even the movie calls that out as a weird thing. He's like, what are you even doing? Doing. <laughs> uh it's great yeah really i mean as far as comedies go like i i just it's it's really i found myself laughing a lot throughout it i mean definitely some jump scares it it just embraces like you said the absurdity of it and and the other thing that i remember so after south by when we were talking about it and i was raving about how much i loved it the one of the first things i said is this movie will likely be at fantasia like, mm-hmm. I think we both were pretty conclusive on the fact that this is a movie that belongs at, at Fantasia. Yes, or that absolutely. At Fantasia. Belongs here, belongs at Fantastic Fest, things yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, one other thing that I want to say is it makes great use of its space. It's a very limited um, space that the entire film takes place in, but it really makes um, smart and, and enjoyable use of every nook and cranny of the house and the portion of the property that we're on. Yeah, absolutely. So done very well uh i don't know todd do you have uh do you have any thoughts about deadstream and whether we're we're selling you on this one no you basically like found footage i'm i'm in i'm like just in on it like in general it can be terrible it can be amazing and the line is often the blurriest of any genre so yeah deadstream i'm can't wait to check out that stream when I get to, to be clear. It's not even found footage. It's a live streamer. Yeah. Right. So, right. Tec- right. But technicality. Kind of like first, it's first the same idea. Movie. Yeah. It's the same cinematic mode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, detail is it's live, really not historical. Mm-hmm. I, I really dig that genre. And um, I think if it is, and it sounds like it is a lot like dash cam, I think that the kind of the live streaming, like Twitch, ness that those that that genre has moved into actually really helps the mm-hmm. genre in a way that was like obviously not available when their Blair Witch project really came out and popularized and mainstreamed that because mm-hmm. they couldn't have a little side thing in the corner being like hey by the way you're gonna die <laughs> I think that that's one of the things that I really like about look behind how this... you look behind you <laughs> yeah I really think that's one of the things that I've really liked about how found footage screen life POV films have evolved is 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 the fact that it's starting to bring um you know pop culture and like modern digital era into it I think horror movies uh, traditionally had always been isolated things right there's these set of characters they're going through something and it's just them dealing with it so when you have dash cam and deadstream then like open up the terror to like the real world and the world gets to like play with that and and kind of be a part of that experience and you get to watch the world being a part of the experience with what we know the internet is like i i i, I wonder if dash cam and deadstream are going to set off a new spur of of these kind of films so i also i think there's something very inherently funny in a movie when there's just someone in the corner in a text box just going this is so fake this looks so <laughs> fake 
because that's the culture that's internet culture like that's i mean it's so awesome to see uh to see some like satirization of internet culture happening in a horror film it's i love it (laughs) i love that you call trolling internet culture i I love that that's that's what it is (laughs) uh i want to move on to another one that i did not expect to enjoy as much as I did. Um, and it is the animated film Inuo, um, directed by Masaki Yuasa. Did I pronounce that right, Taylor? I do not speak Japanese, but you sounded <laughs> confident, and that is 90% of what matters. Committing to it. Um, this is it's such a sprawling odyssey of a film. The only thing that I can really the only way that I can really describe it is it's just an ever evolving concert. Uh, and it's amazing. Uh, I really did not know what to expect with it when we saw it at, uh, at Vancouver. Um, and it was wonderful to see uh, in theaters. So, um, so yeah, just like where this movie starts and the relationships that it develops and then the constant expansion of this ever growing concert that's that just it's it's just so it gets really big it's really grandiose and and but there's really a lot of heart to it as well so um yeah i just found myself more and more mesmerized by this experience and and i thoroughly uh thoroughly enjoyed this one taylor what do you think i did not like it as much as you we had a long drive around seattle um (laughs) around seattle from point a to point b of our next screening um debating the virtues and setbacks of this film Mm -hmm. but i think most importantly this is just barely a gradation below what i said deadstream was which is the exact type of film that almost everybody that got excited about fantasia wants to go to like this Mm -hmm. is just a really well-made animated film it has your demon accents if you're a fan of princess mononoke it has a great score it has um exhilarating animation profiles uh, about the concert sequences that you're talking about and when i think about some of those concert sequences like when he's on the side of the building and the whale is being projected and he's surfing on it basically it's just like it really is awe-inspiring there's some moments in it that i found to lull we had an extensive debate. I won't bring those back up here. I don't know that I remember <laughs> the film perfectly enough to regurgitate those arguments and uh, make my claim that being an animated Beatles-esque mm-hmm. film isn't exactly what I wanted that day. But um, I think that if you're interested at all, you should definitely check this film out. It's a um, very impressive feat mm-hmm. from a very storied filmmaker. Uh, previously, he made Night is Short, uh, Walk on Girl. Nice. Todd, do we sell you on this one? In you? Uh yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty much sold on on most animated films just mm-hmm. because they feel like a a part of my being that isn't filled by anything else. Mm-hmm. So I check out as many as I can. Very cool. Let's do one more. Um and yeah, this is a this is an interesting one to talk about. We uh, we talked about it at Sundance, and I actually am interested in revisiting a conversation about this because um, it's it's evolved in my head. I think I think it's it's grown on me, and that, that means is, it's good. That that means that it's yes, it's definitely something to to pay attention to, um, and that's the film Resurrection by uh, Andrew Siemens. Um, it, uh, stars Rebecca Hall and Tim Roth, um, and is just this, this like menacing film that you spend the whole time wondering whether Rebecca Hall's character is crazy or not. Um, because there is a a wild accusation that is made by her that the film, uh, makes you wonder whether it's true or not. Um, and I, I think we talked about this after Sundance and Taylor, you're thinking a lot. I think I disagree with the words you just used. I think I understand what you're saying, but I think what you just said is whether you believe her or not. And I think that the film's more portraying whether or not you're believing what you see. 
Um, mm, because the film shows you her claim physically. Mm-hmm. It definitely shows Rebecca Hall's body delivering on that claim. So yes. I think that you have to trust okay, whether or not fair. what you saw instead of what she said, because the film fair itself enough. is making itself what she's saying. Yes. I think that's actually, that's probably a good way of putting it. Um, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> um, but there are, I think there are just some really. Todd's like, yeah, that's super clear guys. Thanks. <laughs> it It would be like, just ruining the entire movie if we talked about the nugget that we're okay. talking about which is in the last five minutes essentially yeah um so it, but it certainly it certainly builds i think that this movie has big moments um and it's not even uh, uh like i mean there is one really big moment but i think one of my favorite parts of the film is a monologue it's like a one take monologue and uh and and so i guess maybe that kind of illustrates um kind of the tone and pace of the film and like how how much there is to harness out of just kind of following this character up into where this moment gets or where this movie gets to um so i remember after sundance i was kind of lukewarm about it but the but the more that i thought about it the more i was like you know what i would we watch that i actually have warmed up to it a lot but uh taylor i remember you were all about this movie <laughs> Yes. Um, in the film, Tim Roth plays a psychopath yeah. who has a relationship with his stocky slash wife or girlfriend, Rebecca Hall, who also is perhaps a psychopath. And the film is presented with the same mundanity as the beginning of The Matrix. And Rebecca Hall very much is living that type of Keanu Reeves boring life. And then you start to see everything devolve and you don't know whether or not to trust the screen, her or other characters' existences and the way that they're taking the things that are being interacted with. Um, I think it's one of the most effective psychological films that I've seen this year. And for that reason alone, I would recommend it. Rebecca Hall is also extremely good. And Tim Roth as as consistently great as he's always been, whether or not you like his projects, he's always delivering the goods as a performer. Um, so I would strongly recommend it. And um, when you begin to sense that you're at the end of the movie, you may want to pause it and go to the bathroom if you can, because you're going to need to pay close attention. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. It's a wild one for sure. Um, so it, it will <laughs> you, you can agree on everything almost up until the end of the film. And then everybody kind of has a different read. Yes. Yeah. In fact, the end of the film was what kind of threw me off uh, when I when remember particularly us recording a, a wrap up video yeah. and me asking you a question and you just having like never <laughs> seen it the stupid way that i saw it and yeah. then all of a sudden you like the movie so i'm glad my not, reading can not, challenge you to love it <laughs> hold up not all of a sudden okay it's been a few months <laughs> but yes all, I, of, the, a sudden, all and, of a sudden in thomas's world <laughs> <laughs> todd what's your experience with this film like, um was this was a film that was on my sundance shortlist that i never got around to in january mm-hmm. and Every time someone talks about it, I'm like, yeah, well, that's that, like six month old regret there. <laughs> back up on me. I know I'll get to it eventually. This is one of those films that is like stays on the watch list. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I'm quite excited. I love I love the people involved in it. And it's exactly my brand of, of film. So, yeah, yeah I'm really I, I will excited. say one more thing. Um Andrew Siemens made a direct his directorial debut, I think back in the like early 2010s, like maybe 10 years ago. And this is kind of why I really like seeking out sophomore films from filmmakers that have been like a few years or more away from the game. Cause it's almost like a re declaration of their voice. Like maybe they failed, maybe they didn't do what they wanted to do. And then they go back and then they come back with another offering. And this is exactly the type of film that, um, just excites me about a filmmaker even though it's a second film i i feel like it's almost his declarative announcement of who he's going to be as a filmmaker yeah yeah absolutely i think that's a, a great great read so 
anyway, there's a bunch of other films that we had seen at other festivals, but uh, but those are the three that kind of stood out to us as things to have conversations about. Um, and, uh, and and definitely go see. Yeah, and definitely go see. Right. So let's jump into films that we are looking forward to seeing for the first time. And Todd, we're going to go ahead and start with you so that you can get more words in. Sure. <laughs> Don't let that the, voice going. My editor seems like my word count right. up. So <laughs> I I listed mine five to one, but if there's overlap, I'm happy to jump around. And also, I'm not committed because I haven't seen any of them. So. My number five could end up being my number one or vice versa. And more likely something will shock me in Fantasia and be like my favorite of the festival. That's that normally is, what happens. It is <laughs> a few weeks away. So number five, I chose five movies that I hope are all different enough. And a lot of them encapsulate like different genres or things that I'm really excited to see. So for number five, I chose Princess Dragon or Dragon Princess in English. Not sure. A French film a French animated film and Fantasia has a huge slate of animated films and a lot of animated shorts. And so I wanted to give representation to that. So I chose this one by Anthony Roux and Jean-Jacques Denis. And uh, it's like a fantastical story about these two little girls, it seems like, and there are three baby dragons who hatch into bigger dragons than babies. And I'm excited to see it. Like I was saying earlier, uh, animated stories hold a really like special spot in my heart. And I always find that whether they're good or bad, they're like the easiest to, to digest and sometimes the easiest for me to connect to. So um, from what I've heard about this film, it seems like that would, that would really speak to me. So I'm excited for that one. And I wanted to give a little shout out to some of the animated films that are going to be playing at Fantasia. Very cool. Uh, Taylor, did you, uh, did you have any thoughts on this one before you mentioned it? Um, <clears throat> yes. I had looked at this. I really liked the animation style. Um, it's kind of that Southern European, very like round faces, round um, lines being used. Um, it just is barely off my list, but I'm very interested in it as well. Nice. This one wasn't quite on my radar, um, but I did recognize that there are a bunch of animated um, selections at Fantasia, and and uh, I'm sure this it looks like one that's worth worth checking out. So, so good, good pick there. And of course, Taylor, what's my favorite part about this 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 offering here? Uh, that it's cha cha real smooth. No, no, no. no. Dang it! It's sh- <laughs> it's shorter that than it's eighty minutes. Seventy four <laughs> minutes. Oh, 74, yeah, seventy four minutes. Yeah, it's a short boy, one. barely a feature. Barely, but but it, it crossed the line. So it yep, counts. It counts. All right, Taylor, what's yours? Um, my in descending order fifth uh most anticipated film of the festival let's go with confession i think a film that you were also anticipating thomas if i'm not incorrect yep yeah, uh, so we can from talk about yoon yeah. jong Seok. uh it is a 2022 release it i think began making premieres over in um asian film festivals back in march from what i was seeing maybe a little bit after that um it's purported to be like a thriller crime investigative um psychological film we just talked about um resurrection which was also a psychological film kind of investigatory so you can obviously tell that this is a genre i'm into and um as todd mentioned before we began recording this is one of the many 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 films at fantasia that is from south korea um and this is just one of the ones that stood out it particularly seems to have a strong sense of lighting from the stills that i've seen so far yeah, you know, I was actually really just drawn to this film um, because of the of the premise. It just sounded like a very interesting investigative mystery premise, and and I think mystery is is something that drew me to a few of the films that I'm going to uh, going to mention. Um, but this one is is on my list, so I guess we'll make uh, we'll just kind of do a, a, a joint one here. Um, yeah, uh, ultimately, it it sounds like a very interesting film. Um, I like the uh, the 
the premise and it just it it sounds like a good mystery i don't know like th- that's really what is drawing me to this movie and th- i think there's a trailer on the website that i'm not watching because the less i know about this one the better i think and so i'm hoping that that uh that this one pays off um i think it won an award at one of the film festivals it was at so um a little bit of credibility there and uh and yeah so that is yeah. also yeah, it won of- um best film award at a director's week film mm-hmm. festival it looks like yeah so award-winning it's got some got I some left, creds i left this one off my five because i knew you were going to talk about it thomas uh, but it okay, is yeah. on my mom list i saw yunjin kim's name in like the people that appear in the movie and i was like i'm in like she's one of my favorite actresses i was just like i'm i'm in say less nice. so yeah say less. <laughs> we'll all end up watching this one most likely yeah. um one thing I will say is that if we have any um, New York residents that are watching the uh, video, you can also watch this film as part of the New York Asian Film Festival, which is uh, running here uh, July to early August as well at the Film at Lincoln Center. Um, different screening rooms, they'll be having um, some showtimes for confession. Yeah, thanks for throwing that shout out to the New York Asian Film Festival. Um Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, Todd, we're going to jump back to you because that was one of mine. So I'm just kind of slide that one into uh, All right. into that. So we're going to come back around to you. What is your next one? So my next film is We Might As Well Be Dead by Natalia Sanelnikova. Hope I pronounced that last name right. It is a European drama like slash social commentary out of Germany and Romania. And this is a like a larger genre that fits that has a lot of things playing at the festival. There's also Vesper, which is from, I think Lithuania, which is another like social commentary kind of drama. And um, yeah, so I wanted to kind of give a spotlight to that. I'm really excited about this one. It's also playing at Berlinale and it played at Tribeca. It is about the, it is uh, a, the first feature film by this filmmaker. And it seems to be about owning property and kind of home ownership and where that leaves us in society if you don't have a home. And yeah, and so that's something that really speaks to me. I did my undergraduate thesis on on home and homelessness and being houseless. And so this just kind of like immediately was like, oh, I'm watching that movie. And so um, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Nice. Taylor, did you watch this one at Tribeca? I did not watch this one at Tribeca. It's one of those films that I always had a um, light interest in, but was always overshadowed by other films at the festival. So it's just one of those ones that I didn't get to at Tribeca. Yeah, same here. Like that, I, it's it certainly piqued my interest, um, but just uh, didn't get around to it at Tribeca. So maybe this is a good opportunity to catch it. <laughs> uh cool 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 good pick there uh taylor what's your next one? Oh boy we're going right back to me right, right back to you i guess i should have been prepared huh go ahead and pick um, another one that's on my list so that let's <laughs> go with hugh sarah okay. from michelle yeah. garza severa this is the directorial debut from uh her it just won the uh, nora efron award for the best new narrative director at the tribeca film festival um, this is a second psychological horror element thriller film um, that I have, again, in the vein of resurrection. Um, there's been some alliteration to it being like the Baba Duke, and um, very much about um, the relationship that a woman has to her body during pregnancy and post-pregnancy and the psychological ills and strengths that may come with that. And um, I understand that it's a deeply effective um, genre film in those veins. So this is also, this is number one on my list as well. I mean, it was on my list as well. Really excited for this. It speaks to kind of every genre I really love and like the horror, thriller, mystery, type of film while also being like very body centered. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this film and everything I've heard about it has been really good. I remember reading a review of it after it 
one at Tribeca. And I think the review is in the New York Times, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. It was, you know, a month ago. But yeah, I'm really excited about this film as well. And we'll definitely be checking it out. Yeah, I've heard good things about this one, too. And so it's not uh, on this list, which is why I'm happy that you guys are picking it. So we get to talk about it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've just I've heard great things and I didn't uh, look too much into it. And I think that that was a mistake that I probably uh, shouldn't have made when it played at. Was it Tribeca that it was at? Yes. Yeah. 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 So. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it was on the screening platform. I think it was uh, theaters only. Oh, OK. Maybe that's why I didn't get around to it. So I have an excuse. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very underwatched. If you take a look at, you know, people that attended the festival versus how many people have seen it. So mm-hmm. cool. Cool. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, let's talk about a light, fun one. Um, I'm going to they have those. They have it. This one seems like it. Uh, so I want to talk very briefly about Fast and Feel Love. Um, it's a Thailand film. I am not going to try to, to uh, pronounce the director's name. I usually give it a shot, but <clears throat> it's a Nawapool and then like 15 letters. Um, but essentially, it's about a, uh, a 30 year old who has devoted his life to um, to uh, competitive cup stacking. Um, which gets in the way of his relationship. And so his girlfriend ends up breaking up with him. And, and it's, uh, it's their perspective on, at least from what I could tell, the, like their perspective on, uh, on how they, uh, uh, how adulting, uh, the challenges of adulting when trying to maintain that relationship, but also trying to maintain this competitive cup stacking uh, situation. And, and it's, it's so parody. Like it's clear that like, the trailer makes makes it very clear this is a parody film don't take it seriously the name at least from what the the trailer indicates is kind of a rip off of fast and furious um and so well, the font is very much yes exactly yeah. that yeah. font yeah so it it it's it knows what it is and and i think that this is one that will be a nice kind of mental break uh, for me in the festival like you know I really like my mysteries I like my dramas um, but uh, but I like to also throw in some of these like comedy parody things um, just to kind of break it up a bit and I think this is going to be one of those that uh, that it will be a kind of uh, a s- absurd that that embraces it in the right way uh, at least that's what I'm hoping it does so uh, yeah I was uh, I, when I watched the trailer I was like this is one that I'm going to watch. I don't know if it's going to be one of my favorites, but it, it might be enjoyable enough to uh, yeah, to check out. So did anyone, did this even pop up on anyone else's radar? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And the yeah. first thing that I thought when I looked at it was that there's no way Thomas is going to watch a movie. that's 132 minutes. <laughs> 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 that, there's just no way. And then the second thing I thought was like, oh, this looks like a really fun way for me to get outside my comfort zone. Great way for me to follow up RRR with a different type of uh, yeah. South Asian film that's kind of stylized and enjoyable and crowd pleasing. But uh, then I got realistic and I looked back at the 132 minute runtime and I thought I'm attending NYAFF as well. There's no way I'm going to do all these Asian films in this single month of July. So maybe I'll get to it at the next film festival it pops up at. I feel like it wouldn't be out of consideration to see it in a theater at VIF maybe mm-hmm. this fall. So um, yes, I'm super interested in it. It's probably, you know, in my top 15, but uh, I just unrealistic with the amount of films that we are slated to watch this month. Let me tell you something. If this was so intriguing to me. I totally overlooked the runtime. I did not realize it was over two hours. <laughs> Thomas right? is like, it is no longer. He's cemented. He's going to edit this video I, so that it, he never said it. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's going to edit it to be, I'm going to watch Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the theme for me in this video is commitment, right? You just commit to it. And so I said it. And that's what it is. I, I, I am still interested in it. Uh, the runtime is not scaring me off, at least in theory. We'll get 30 minutes into it. And then I'll, I'll follow up with you at the end, like see at what point, if any, that I get tired of it. Because the I want <laughs> constant updates on how many days you watch this over. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And just because of that challenge, I'm going to find a Saturday, maybe. 
that I can try to watch this whole thing in one sitting, maybe. So I not... cannot wait for that Twitter thread. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So e- even with the, the runtime mentioned, I, I'm not that I'm not quite dropping it off my list yet, but it does seem interesting. So uh, Todd, did the runtime scare you off as well? <laughs> uh, no, no, it didn't. I've spent the last two days watching Gone with the Wind. So at this point, I'm just like, come at me. Come at me. Yeah. Nothing. Can and that me. doesn't even need subtitles. So, gosh, you're probably a week. Well, long yeah, that's true. I'm also I'm from Georgia, so there's no accent. There's no American accent that can scare me off. But, uh, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Very cool. Anyway, Fast and Feel Love. That's on my list. Uh, Todd, what is next on yours? Next on mine, also fun one, hopefully, is Please Baby, Please by Amanda Kramer, who she actually has two films at this year's film festival. And both of them are kind of, uh, both of them are being spotlighted in their queer cinema section, which is something I also wanted to make sure I highlight. This is a film that stars Andrea Riseborough and Harry Melling, who people may remember from Queen's Gambit. Also has some other big names like Demi Moore is in it. And this is a, I mean, just hold on. Harry Melling is Dudley Dursley. Like, that's who people know him as. Yes. And he was in The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Like, come on. We got to. He's a great performer. You got to give him his due. Come on. (laughs) Well, I'm talking more recently than than that. I was like, I don't know. People will be watching miniseries. It's Emmy season. Um, The Queen's Gambit came out years ago. I'm sure it's still nominated for an Emmy this year somehow. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I don't know how the Emmys work. No one knows how the Emmys work. If anyway, you are popular, you get nominated. If you're good, exactly. you don't. Uh, if yeah. you are an HBO show, you get nominated. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, this is an experimental like comedy, romance, musical. And uh, it just looks, looks really good. It's also short, 96 minutes. So it seems like it'll be a fun time. And if it isn't, well, then... It's short, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Taylor, you have thoughts on this one? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought it up. It's on my, I'm going to get to it if I have the time. Like it's, it's one of those ones that just off to the side where it's like, I, it might be the first film that I watch even just because I'm very interested in seeing how a film with this cast list shapes up. Um, you didn't mention Carl Guzman, but he's one of my, favorite working actors he's uh known for working with gaspar noe on films like love um and then mary lynn Roxyob is in it which is just very silly to me she's uh got a great sense of comedic timing and can really um help a director or a writer control tone in a project like a very off-kilter tone which is what it seems like kramer's going for in this film so Mm -hmm. um very interested to see it and really glad that you're highlighting it I'm not the most inclined to enjoy experimental film. Um, that is an accurate assessment. Yeah. Uh, I, this, I mean, it, this seems interesting. You guys are talking highly of it. And so I, I you know, may, maybe I'll make time for it. But this is actually, this is also one that will be screening at the North Bend Film Festival. So um, that's, in fact, I think it's the closing film for North Bend. Um, uh, which is pretty fun for us up here in the, in the Pacific Northwest. If uh, you guys like it enough, you can see it in person uh, here at, at Twin Peaks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not um, it's not quite on my radar. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and hear what your guys's verdict on it before I try to try to make time for it. I'm gonna decide right now. It's gonna be like the best movie I've seen all year, just to make Thomas see just- it. <laughs> See, that what's interesting is that the reason I'm interested in this is not because I think it's going to be good. I just think it's going to be absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And it's got all these players that I'm really interested in watching how they interact and what's going to be more of a think piece about the industry and, and the genre that it's working in. You know, this mm-hmm. isn't uh, just narrative fiction mm-hmm. for narrative fiction's sake. This is definitely more of a meta commentary on a lot of things. Yeah. yeah and I can there might be a headspace I can be in where I like get in that mood and I like can see it from there. But I think, I think I need to find my favorite film of Fantasia first and then, 
and then anything else is just gravy, right? Like I, I can, once I find my favorite, like the one that is just nothing's going to be better than that, and then I can have the mental space for, because that's what, I guess that's what I look for at these festivals. I look for that thing that just puts me on a high, right? And so everything mm-hmm. that falls short of that, um, uh, you know, it's not, I don't quite rave as much about, but, uh, but if I can find that, if I can find it early, then maybe I can get please baby please in and actually be able to enjoy it so i'm gonna get on the horn with apple tv plus see if they can't put cha-cha on the festival just for oh, you boy. i love it i i <laughs> yes and then everything else will be gravy right <laughs> uh taylor what's your next one uh the next film that i would like to highlight is the girl from the other side from co-directors yutaro kubo and satomi maya this is a follow-up to a short film of the same name i don't know if it's um inspired by or starting the story afterward but i think back in 2018 they did a 10 minute short of the same name um this is an animated feature it uh is from japan it uses a lot of um foreground and and depth of field animation there's a lot of verticality from the um, images that i've seen um and it's also got that like classic almost like victorian mother goose style but it also has um it's very infused with the japanese like um almost death note animation i'm i'm very very intrigued by the visual aspect of it um, and I really have always liked that fairy tale animation style. And um, it's got dark, monstrous creatures and a little girl who is uh, wearing a white dress who obviously recommend or represents something like innocence. And she's being guided around by a, a guardian who's decked out in like this spectrally looking black robe. So I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. I can't yeah. wait to watch it. Did I mention 70 minutes? 70 minutes. Oh, Ooh. man. These animated films are clocking in <laughs> at prime run times. <laughs> yeah, you have me beat even. Yeah. How did you get started in 74? That's impressive. Um, I just looked for the best looking animated movie at the festival and I said, uh, it's this <laughs> one. And then they lowered the run time because I chose it. That's, oh, okay. well, that's how it works. Can, can, you, can you have them do that for Fast and Feel Love? I cannot. I didn't pick it. And if I forced it, the rule wouldn't continue to work. Of course. Of course. Um, Todd, is this one of the animated films that popped up on your radar? It did pop up on my radar and I'm hoping to get to it. Um, Didn't make didn't make my short list. But yeah, Mm -hmm. it it was on my radar. You just said short. I'm glad you're highlighting it. You said short list at 70 minutes. I love it. It is short. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm glad you guys are mentioning these animated films because actually I'm, I'm scrolling over my my uh, my top five and realized I did not pick an animated movie. Hmm. And but that's your favorite new movie at SIF was probably animated. No, that's new sick. movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, N-U-O. not yeah. Cha Cha. Not Cha. And not I know, the other right. one that we don't talk about. Actually. In- <laughs> <laughs> for legal uh, reasons for legal that's right that's right we did see that one um actually it might have been marcel but is that one animated yeah that's animated oh yeah technically that counts yeah. that counts so anyway two two of my favorite films at at Seth marcel is animated. amazing oh yes that's right you did see it okay not After to get thing. sidetracked but yeah. speaking of animated movies marcel <laughs> the shell is amazing we we will we will hit that after this video is done <laughs> yeah. i can't wait to talk more about that it is very pleasant um, yes so um let's see the move the next movie that i'm going to talk about is a film called uh glorious it's a, a u.s film world premiere uh from uh rebecca mckendry um and essentially, from what I gather from the premise, a, a drunk guy wanders into a bathroom stall um, and uh, strikes up a conversation with the person in the other stall. And according to this last sentence, it says what they tell Wes, uh, the main character, uh, is that he is about to become someone very important, but he can't leave this bathroom and he's going to have to make a big, big sacrifice. So remember what Oh, I was is this the Ryan Quentin uh jk simmons jk simmons, yes that's it okay yep. okay yes glorious um i this is another one that i i just don't want to know a whole lot about like it sounds like a, a one location film if you 
followed my videos, you know, I love limited or one location kind of storytelling, uh, limited cast. Uh, JK Simmons is, is a, is a draw. Um, and so definitely a selling point for me there. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a mystery there. I want to know what is the sacrifice that he has to make? It, it has, it has a, um, a big promise to keep here for me and, uh, and hopefully it delivers on that. But, um, like I said earlier, mystery, I'm kind of drawn to mysteries and, uh, and this is one where that, that mystery element, it definitely has my interest. So, yeah. um, I left this off my, I left this off my five because it was on yours, yeah. but I co-signed this as I'm very excited to see it. Awesome. Taylor, you seem to react positively when I when you knew which one it was. I did not react positively. I reacted as if I knew what you were talking about <laughs> <Okay>. because I <laughs> remembered because I went down a big like, how is there this great star list for this movie and no one cares? And I did some <laughs> digging and I looked at the other films that Rebecca McKendry mm -hmm. has made mm -hmm. and I decided that I was not going to watch this film at the film festival unless I hear otherwise quite strongly from you fellows um Just every wait. year there, gonna... there's kind of these like I, I don't want to be mean but I'll say like filmmakers I don't respond to with actors that I want to watch mm -hmm. in movies that I'll say suck Mm -hmm. And this seems like it's going to be one of those, like a gotcha to watch it type of movies. And um, I'll let you guys figure out if I should watch it um, because I've been scorned enough. Yeah. <laughs> we will, we will see. I get, um, I get kind of the Oak room uh, feel uh, like since uh, around this. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Oak room with, uh, with RJ Mitty. It was the first year that we covered uh, Fantasia. Um, it was directed by uh, Cody Callahan, um, I think was his name. And it was the movie about the bar, the, the storytelling about a bar in a bar with another story about a bar. It was like the, the multiple level inception deep kind of movie about bars. But anyway, it gives me that kind of tonality to it or that kind of like um, mystery and suspense and like you know waiting for what is what is the punch here like what are we getting to and so i really did enjoy the oak room a lot and uh and uh, i think that that kind of film is what i i like to see at fantasia so that's why this one falls in my my camp of things i can't wait to see i hope it's great because ryan has been an underused asset as an actor for a long yeah. time since true blood yeah interesting all right todd what's your next one uh, well, my next one's my last one, and oh, that's right. yep. I, I think I have now the longest runtime of any selection so far. I've chosen Next Sohi. That is my there. next title. So All right, yeah. knocking them out. The closing film of the festival. I chose it because I have like eight, at least eight South Korean films on my list to watch of like just that I want to watch, not that anyone has recommended so i'm sure more will crop up so i wanted to you know spotlight it and this just looks like it's a really good and compelling drama about a young woman who works in a call center this was it premiered at, i don't know if it premiered but it played at can yeah it was people. the uh closing night uh yeah. critics week yeah and uh it's the closing film here at fantasia which means it'll be august third so we're still a few weeks out from it but yeah I, this was going to just be my my selection to also encompass all of these mini south korean dramas that i'm really excited for this one being uh apparently the crown jewel and uh yeah so uh, taylor i'll let you yeah i mean it i would also assert that it is probably the crown jewel based on the feedback that I've seen from critics that were able to attend that um, closing night at Critics Week, you know, to be a con closing night film and then a Fantasia closing night film kind of, I think, cements how sticky this movie is likely going to be for a large group of people. Um, my basic understanding is that it's about uh, the death of a young woman and a female detective's search to figure out what exactly the actual cause of her death was um it is 
again, like I was saying with Resurrection, one of those films from a sophomore filmmaker that's like, I think it's been 15 years since Julie Jung made a movie. And I'm super interested to see, you know, how she's adapted and changed her voice and style as a filmmaker, see her reassert herself and, um, you know, continue making films. Hopefully, hopefully this is great. And hopefully it's just the the first in a, a long salvo of films that she'll make back. Um, but yeah, this is one of my most anticipated of any festival this year. Yeah. Um, it just so happens that it's at Fantasia. Mm-hmm. Fascinating guys. So this one got mixed into all the next that's playing at this, at this festival. And so I didn't know uh, the history or like what the, this film has been doing with, uh, with festivals. And so, uh, you know, I see next door, I see next exit, next. So he like, Oh, there's a bunch of next. Let's see which ones I'll, I'll actually get around to. And so it just kind of blended in with that, but you guys are a trilogy. They're truly, you know? yes, next They're door. A cinematic <laughs> universe. <laughs> cinematic universe. Uh, you guys are speaking very highly of it. I am now thoroughly excited for it. And I don't know, maybe I'll maybe I'll replace Fast and Feel Love with next Zoe. <laughs> I was about to say, there's no way you watch both. <laughs> yeah, it's no way you watch longer. both. The, th- the extra three minutes might might kill you. Might kill no, me. No, 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 no. I, I talked to Julie and uh, <laughs> she... She said that it's uh, 10 minutes of, of end credits and that oh, you don't need to oh, stay. Oh, okay. Okay, No, but because, <laughs> but because it's part of the next cinematic universe, you actually have to sit through the end credits to get the post-credits scene. <laughs> the post-credits scene. And <laughs> you have to go back and you have to watch Nicolas Cage's next That's to really true. set the tone. Oh, my goodness. This is insane, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys have sold me on next. So he, I, I, and on the subject of the next, next exit is one that I have been wanting to see. And I think that one's actually at uh, um, North Bend as well. So I might be able to see it there. And the next yes, door. Fantasia and North Bend. Yeah. 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 And the next door. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just make it a next afternoon. I'll just watch through them all. <laughs> or you'll just say, thank you next. Thank you. Maybe, maybe some of them that'd be just an <laughs> Ariana Grande song. <laughs> um okay well was that your last one taylor uh or do no, you have one no more? my my most anticipated film is different how many more do you have sir i have two more well then why so don't actually, you go and then yeah, i'll go and in. then you'll go yeah that that pens out um the next one that i want to talk about is this film called uh the artifice girl it's uh uh, USA film, another world premiere from Franklin uh, Rich. Um, and the synopsis just says when special agent Dina Helms uh, and Amos uh, Kalaho, I think, uh, enlist the help of a vigilante tech wizard, Gareth, um, their lives take a sharp turn into the future of digital technologies once this unusual method of catching uh, child predators comes to light. Um, this one uh, again, it's a it's a movie that the premise kind of drew me to. Um, there's like this kind of interesting hook to it. Like, what is what is this interesting, unusual method that, that they're talking about? So, um, sci-fi. I am usually drawn to sci-fi um, stories, but uh, uh, the film is also uh, written, directed by Franklin Rich, and I guess he's also uh, an actor in as well. And I'm very much drawn to films with writer, director, actors. Um, so. That should be interesting, um, and yeah, I just want to see what the uh, what the critical analysis is that this movie has on the digital age. So, yeah, did this one pop up for your, either of you guys as something that it you're interested in? Did pop up on my list. I don't know that I'm interested in it, but it it does have the recipe of things that I do like, which is I think it's a writer director. Um, co-star maybe probably co-star. editor as well oh, yeah. um mm-hmm. so that's a there's a bunch of like tonal control being exhibited from the filmmaker i'm always really uh intrigued by that because those tend to be really carefully wrought pieces um based on the images that i saw i i was less aesthetically interested than i had hoped to be um but you know, you'll watch it and you'll let me know if it's any good and I'll reprioritize it. But I, I was definitely especially intrigued by the fact that it is an English language film so I could rest my eyes ever so slightly from reading. <laughs> uh, you're right. He is also the editor on the film. So that has me even more interested. Um, 95 minutes. 
decent runtime. Um, Todd, what did you think about this? Is, is this uh, yeah registered? This popped up on my list, and I like slotted it in with parentheses of if Thomas likes it. I will launch um, because I have <laughs> guys, so many. You guys, you guys have to be very careful with that. Okay. I have liked movies that people are like, Thomas, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. So it's so somewhere, careful it's somewhere between the poles of like Cha Cha uh -huh. and Dash Cam, <laughs> where like, as long as it doesn't eclipse one of those poles, and I'm like, yeah, yeah we'll, we're fine. That's a really good analogy. I think that that is a very yeah, good perspective. I, I I'm more that. of a like, I'll see how convincing he is and then I'll wait for like three other people to back him up and then I'll vet those sources. <laughs> You'll letterbox it. Is it less than three stars? Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll look up some film analysis on it, but it does. Uh, it has Lance Henriksen, right? Who played Bishop in uh, mm -hmm. Aliens. So mm -hmm. that it would be interesting to see him perform at this stage of his life because mm -hmm. um, he, he was a very talented performer um, in the films that I saw. All right, cool. Taylor, you have one more. I do have one more. This is my most anticipated film of the festival, and I do not expect it to be my favorite, but how can you attend a Fantasia film with Dario Argento's first film in 10 years and not make it your most anticipated film of the festival? I'm talking about Dark Glasses, his first film since Dracula 3D, which I believe was among the worst critically panned films of 2012 uh absolutely eviscerated dark glasses is uh giallo follow-up argento returning back to his roots uh a woman gets in a car accident um based on what i've read it sounds like she accidentally murders an entire family except for a 10 year old boy and then that 10 year old boy begins to act as her eyes as she walks around um clad in we'll say innuendo inducing clothing and uh attempting to solve some sort of a giallo-esque mystery wearing extremely large dark sunglasses god is this one that you're interested in um this is one i'm going to watch this is not one i would say i'm interested in uh, I have a very like complicated history with Argento, um, whereas I think I'm a lot more lukewarm on him as a filmmaker, even historically, than a lot of people. And this like gets me eviscerated by uh, Letterbox community. But yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to check it out. It's hard not to check it out. And uh, yeah, so it, it, maybe it would be on my like most curious list, but I don't know if it's my most anticipated list. Yeah, I feel like this is one that I would that I would stop on in the in the lineup. I'd read the synopsis and say, "Oh, interesting." And then I'd move on. Um, <laughs> I think though, it does seem to fill like that space that Fantasia exists for. I think that there this is something that is a film that maybe belongs or that will present well at Fantasia. Um, it's so, giallo. Yes, yeah. this is what the festival is made for. Yeah, so absurd pseudo sexual that, crazy film yes that, absolutely that sounds about right and so yeah i don't i don't know if i'm actually going to get around to this one um this i guess i'm going to lean on you guys again and figure out uh figure out if it's one to watch but um but yeah i guess it was at the berlin international film festival so i don't know that it's a good thing right I am not saying that I think it's going to be great. I'm not even recommending it to people that need to watch a great piece of cinema. I am saying it's my most anticipated film of the festival because it's an old master, whether or not you like the films or not, you know, Argento is considered one of the Italian masters. He's absolutely a master of Giallo, whether or not you like sure. the genres. Otherwise I have a hate love relationship with the genre. Um, I, I, love to hate it and there's like three movies from the genre that i love and all of them make me react with more thoughts and emotions than most other films mm -hmm. um and that's valuable to me to to get me to engage and react to it in that manner um and just a, a brief aside 
Todd, if you have the time, I would strongly recommend that you watch The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, his directorial debut, which from what I've seen is one of the best giallos and probably one of his best. I have not seen that one. Uh, I, I know, I checked. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, my letterbox is not Stalker super accurate right. all the time, but <laughs> oh, okay. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I have not seen that one. Yeah. God, you have tabs on me. I should just start like <laughs> clicking like random movies and my favorites and just oh, like man. I've not watched this. He, he has oh no, you you just said that you don't like uh Argento, and so I looked up to I see what you'd seen. Yeah, I and I was like, really... oh wow, you did not respond to Suspiria the way that I did. But I understand that. I yeah, there's things like 2001 A Space Odyssey where I'm like, this is one of the greatest films ever made, and I never want to sit through it again. It's one of the coldest, <laughs> most despondent things that I've ever done with my I life. I actually don't even think I finished <laughs> 2001 Space Odyssey. That oh, movie is so I just, I just it's a masterpiece it is one of the I best pieces amazing. of cinemas ever made but it just makes me so i feel like i'm artificial intelligence i feel like i'm mm-hmm. becoming an android as i watch it it's so cool <laughs> yeah that, that actually sounds about right <laughs> yeah interesting okay well i have one more and i'm pretty sure both of you responded as this one uh to this one as one that you guys are are interested in and that movie is a uh, my small land um it's about a 17 year old girl whose whose father's refugee status has been uh turned down and so it puts um uh an extra weight on her to um take care of the family as they you know navigate the, the fallout of that the fallout of that uh, of that decision, um, you know, I read the synopsis and immediately thought of two films that I saw at uh, at Tribeca, which was The Courtroom uh, and Aisha. Um, and so, the, both of those films were movies that responded positively. The Courtroom being about uh, an, uh, an an immigrant who um, who accidentally voted and then had to d- deal with the court system uh, about the the illegality of voting as a non-citizen um and then Aisha being about um uh a Nigerian refugee in uh Ireland who has to navigate the bureaucracy of keeping her refugee status or being sent back to dangerous situation in Nigeria so these films about kind of precarious um uh residents in 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 the country I I don't know I've just I've responded to those very positively at, uh, with these other two films and I think that this will be a, a different perspective on kind of a similar uh challenge or conundrum when it comes to um uh, a family having to wade through the the legal challenges of being able to live in a country um and this of course coming from the perspective of a of a 17 year old and so even though all these films really ha- have kind of that common theme of like the insecurity of living uh of a living situation um they all have different perspectives and i'm 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 interested in seeing uh the approach that this one has with it being from this perspective of a 17 year old so uh yeah you guys i i think i mentioned this to both of you and both of you said that you are interested in watching this one yeah is that correct taylor yeah yeah i didn't know if todd wanted to take the lead there um (laughs) but uh yeah so this is an interesting film to me for a like a multitude of reasons one of which is when you think of japanese cinema the last thing you think of is the story of an immigrant to japan you might think lost in translation which is like someone staying for a while on a vacation or a work trip but you don't ever think about people that are trying to immigrate to japan because it's one of the most notoriously difficult countries to immigrate to um and so i think that that's just a fascinating angle for the film to begin with but then there's the other elements um like her being of kurdish and turkish descent um, that it's a directorial debut. There's a lot of different things that are very interesting to me from a filmmaking and storytelling perspective. So this is like my number six, my number seven. It's just barely off my list. Yeah, thank you for mentioning it being a direct uh, feature directorial debut. That was also another thing that appealed to me. Um, Todd, you get the final word on this. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at everything y'all said, I echo that sentiment of why I found it interesting. Um, Hirokazu Koreeda was also a producer and I really love his work. And so that was just also like kind of like an endorsement of it in itself. I'm a, 
the immigrant stories hit really close to home for obvious reasons. And so this one is like on my list, but it's also one that I'm like, man, this is going to be like a tough hang for me. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm going to, to put myself through it and probably let it wash over me. And then, uh, based on the sound of it, like cry myself to sleep, but (laughs) that's something I'm really excited for. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely on my list. You hear that Kleenex? Todd is willing to be sponsored. Yes. Yeah, that's, right. Willing, yes. <laughs> that's right. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a longer one, um, a little less than two hours. So I have, I have, I have a lot of minutes to be putting on film uh, and film watching during this festival. There's going to be, I a... think you forgot about run times when you made your list. That's what I'm pretty confident <laughs> about. Yeah. No, I did this really weird thing and based it off of how the premise sounded. <laughs> That's you've never done that in your life. Don't you start lying now. <laughs> but it's Fantasia. I, I, I make special exceptions for Fantasia. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that we've mentioned a lot of really good films. And in, as as we know, we do this to to help illuminate, uh, um, you know, interests of each other and and. Uh, kind of like what Todd said uh, earlier, it's you, you just never know which one will end up being your favorite. You never know which one will end up standing out. And and sometimes it's something that you thought was going to be good and turned out to be great. And sometimes it's one that wasn't even on your radar. Um, so uh, that is that's just kind of how this goes. And I'm always excited to, to talk about uh, these films and I'm looking forward to um, trying to do a wrap up video <laughs> on Fantasia. Go. Yeah, um, while also doing North Bend, I guess, because we go from fan- so Fantasia is from July 14th to August 3rd, and then North Bend starts August 4th. So uh, that yeah, sounds is, really yeah. cute. What's it like only doing one film festival instead of two for the month of July? You know, I, I does that think feel, that, uh, does that feel nice? You guys, you guys feel it, relaxed? it does feel really nice. Super cash? It, yes, yes, I am going to try, I'm going to get decent hopefully amounts of sleep compared to you <laughs> yeah but it really it helps me actually because my only goal were for Pantasia was to watch more films than taylor baker my partner's like why is From this that written festival, on our wall right? yeah. and i'm like <laughs> no it has to be written on the wall to always remind me watch more films than taylor baker see if you can and, do and what and thomas and beaumont cannot i and exactly. i you know what i have embraced you i have told- two film festivals so like i have a I'm naturally predisposed to to have. So you're measuring up. based on the film festival. Oh not- yeah, it's just Fantasia. Okay. Anything else doesn't that's, count. That's very selective. <laughs> I really respect the way that you built the game. Yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah, I have embraced the fact that I will not watch more movies than than Baker. I think that there's something something mentally unstable with you to watch so many movies in one festival. <laughs> that is a correct way to say deeply unwell with you. Deeply unwell with you. <laughs> yes, I don't. I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I don't know if you have that little jewel or charm or whatever that Hermione had in the Prisoner of Azkaban. The Time Turner. You don't remember Turner. the name, the Time Turner? Oh, that's no. right. You don't read books. No, I you just are going I, off the movie. You know what? I, I did that. <laughs> read that one way back when, like okay, way in my history. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I won't. I won't do it. I've tried. Uh, I got close. No, I didn't. Uh, but I got a lot on my account. Uh, but this this will be a festival that I'm looking forward to just like trying to enjoy as many as I can. Um, and you know what? I am going to challenge myself to to get some of these these longer films in uh, into my lineup of things that I watch. So yeah, I cannot wait to have you guys tell me that I was right about my assessments for each film that you watch. That's I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to very intentionally not validate your opinions. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to tell you that uh, that which one was the glorious was the best film of the festival so that you can go watch it. That's preposterous. <laughs> Face Off is playing this festival. We all That's know that it would be the true. best film screened at the festival. I know. It's such a, you were like, what about movies that are playing at the festival that you've seen? And I'm like, well, like, we off? can't. We can't do like 30 minutes on face off, right? Like that doesn't count. But but like go watch face off if you haven't seen it and you're in Montreal, go see face off. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
Uh, that is funny. Well, we'll bring this video to a close and we'll talk about these films again at the end of the festival um, and other things that we've seen as well and liked. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and close out. Uh, Taylor, where can people find your content from Fantasia and New York Film Festival? New York Asian film. As well. always, everything is at drinkinthemovies.com. You just click the little tab to go wherever you want to go. If you want to read reviews, click the reviews thing. If you want to find our social stuff, hit the about. And uh, if you want to just read all the festival stuff, hit the festival button. I love the pointing. I'm going to orient the videos and make sure that pointing is correct, Todd. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> sure I'm <that> stoked. <laughs> Todd, where can people find you online? Um, you can find me. This is for real. I should have reviews of Polaris, which is the opening festival coming later this week, and then Fantasia and all of its entirety for the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. At this is for real. <laughs> That's right. That's where I go. So you can find our stuff on this is for real.com for real, of course, spelled F O R R E E L. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the links are at this is for real.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at being TSJ. And that's how it's done. So that's how it's done. <laughs> you can notably not find him on Letterboxd, even though you can find him on Letterboxd. He just doesn't use it properly. And it infuriates backlogs, like every three months. I do. That's exactly it. It infuriates Taylor and makes me happy. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is true. <laughs> Very cool. Well, gents, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, curtain raiser for Fantasia 2022. Um, we will just be watching films for the next three weeks and, uh, and we'll talk about them again later. But until then, everyone out there watching, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, and until next time, keep it real. <laughs>